Hey there, welcome back to the big board. Uh, I'm your host, Kevin, and we're here to have a look at the Forgotten Legions and have a little bit of a conversation about it. We're at a point now where the, the loss of forces uh, for the Axis side inflicted by the Commonwealth have uh, really started to limit our, our choices and our ability to uh, execute. Um, I think we would probably see this uh, see Damascus fall almost on uh, historical timeline, turn 10. We're at the uh, beginning of turn 7 here. And there's a number of other units just out of frame just there that will be able to punch up pretty aggressively here and probably be across this line, this river, this important river line here uh, at the end of turn 7. And uh, this guy's uh, this guy over here on the right flank. He's probably going he's going to be pretty useless this turn out of supply. But there are enough forces just down here to really put a lot of pressure on a very weak defense. Uh, I have to admit that I probably have not done as well as I could defending here. Uh, having played the other main title that is available for this conflict, they do play out. And they play out similarly, but they also play out very differently. The, the, the losses are significantly higher in this game. And I think that has a lot to do with <clears throat> something that uh, has attempted to be addressed here with the design, but probably not completely so. And I don't know for a fact, but I'm, I'm kind of guessing here. Uh, the, the old game, the original drive on Damascus, had a straight uh, CRT that you either, you either died or you retreated. And generally speaking, there was a lot of death. And so I think the board uh, was cleared pretty quickly. And a similar thing happens here. But now we're working on uh, a CRT that is step-based. So D1, I'm going to lose one step. I'm going to retreat two hexes. And that type of thing, right? You can see that's all pretty standard. Now, there are a couple of, there's a couple of niggly things here that is a sort of a Vance Von Boris trait, right? The A1 on a, on a 1 or a two or a three there on those four to one, five to one, six to one results. They're kind of the curveball results where a one is a great die roll to make, but you don't want to make a, a one at four to one. You don't want to, uh, you know, be, I guess, in parentheses, lucky <laughs> uh, because you're going to lose a step. So that, you know, that's that, I guess, the, the intention there is to have that, uh, random element of bad things happening despite your best efforts and you you had a great attack at four to one or five to one or six to one odds you had overwhelming forces and you surrounded the guys the bad guys and you got you, you kill them all or made them retreat or whatever the case may be you still took a loss I, mean, I can certainly see that but it's just as annoying as all get out uh to uh go through and and roll um let's say for instance i'm i'm fighting at one at one to one or three to four down here and I would expect, to, you know, at three to four, I'd expect uh, on, a, on a, at one die roll to inf have some success, but I and, and take a loss. But then at one to one, you know, I'm, I'm pushing those guys back, and then I'm pushing them back on three to two and two to one, three. And, oh, that's right, I roll the one on four to one. It just, just, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. And there's some, there's some results like that in other games of his, and I just think it's a thing for him. Uh, my point, though, is that even with the step losses here, units are still disappearing from the board. And that's not necessarily what happened here historically. You know, battalions and companies and regiments weren't just wiped out wholesale. They actually retreated and reformed and came back uh, either in a reduced, uh, at reduced strength or they were you know, given some replacements and then they were pushed back into the line. And, you know, the other title that uh, represents this, this battle, uh, Reluctant Enemies, had a nice uh, little mechanic there for that. It would take the dead pile of, of certain types of units and you would randomly pick a unit and bring it back into the battle uh, to represent what was going on in, on the battlefield and what happened historically. And that was a nice touch because it, it, it gave just enough units back to the Axis side here to allow them to 
kind of hold on or kind of, you know, just be in the game. Whereas here I'm really struggling as the Axis player to work out how to, how to manage my defense. Uh, once, once you have a bridge here on the line, there's very little chance to counterattack because once you counterattack, you, you're going to have to come off your best offensive positions. And given the offensive capabilities here, you're going to have to pile in a lot of units and then you're leaving yourself exposed for, uh, for uh, to be exploited on <clears throat> by your enemy. There's no secondary movement here in the game mechanic. There's no move, fight, and then maybe another move or a partial move. There's just move and fight, which is fantastic for uh, a, a simple, easy to play beginner's game. Not complaining about it at all. But if you really do want to uh, do any sort of counterattacking or set up an opportunity to exploit further for the next for the for the next turn, you're gonna have to leave some units out on the pointy end and put them at risk or leave objectives exposed because of the way the game works. I'm hoping that makes sense. Uh, so, okay, so so we are get, we are at a point where we're looking at stopping because I think this game is uh, practically over. I've done some quick math in my head on on the next couple of attacks that would occur and you know got a feel for where they're at and where we're pretty heavily uh, either surrounding this with a big pile of guys defending or where we're chipping away and taking it very quickly depending on on how the how the defense plays out there so i think we're done because that's an auto victory if you capture damascus so uh, so that's that section of the map. But then, as I mentioned in the very first video, there are three approaches uh, in this terrain. The second uh, is this valley in between two mountain ranges. And the British elected to hold off on uh, being aggressive here and attacking here. Uh, they didn't really have the firepower uh, to uh, push in here and be aggressive over towards Damascus. And they took some losses here. There was a couple of step losses that were taken by by the Brits, uh, the Commonwealth forces. And so that's actually released. <clears throat> uh, these guys here pulled back to a fairly well, uh, a, a good position to defend against. And as you can see, five, seven factors here. I would have, if I wanted to counterattack in here and try and mess up the, the Commonwealth supply, I'd be a seven factors attacking uh, four, uh, even with this Arty, and we would just barely get a two to one, and then there'd be DRMs for the river, and kind of, kind of ugly for uh, for an attack, particularly given it's a, a thinly defended area. So I wouldn't want to risk a two to one attack where I have a fifty percent chance of losing a step or two. Uh, so that would be a bad thing. So we've elected to defend in place here. Now along the coastal road, uh, I'm just going to set the camera up and hopefully you can see that. I can't see what you're seeing. Yeah, it looks all right. So along the coastal road here, we did make a counterattack and uh, the advance after combat has now put a unit potentially at risk here. And this is where I, I started to realize that, uh, you know, there's a, a challenge here for for the game player uh, as the Axis player, if you are counterattacking, you are going to put yourself at somewhat at risk. You can only advance a certain number of units depending on what the combat result is. And so you can't advance the whole stack. Uh, so you can't push the line back, right? So uh, this places uh, the, the Commonwealth in a bit of a sticky, sticky wicket here in that they've taken a step loss, had to retreat. They've, caught, they've captured this uh, victory location here. But if they were able to consolidate their forces, they could, you know, pile on here or maybe pile on here. There's a, that's a five defense, so this is the strongest. They have to soak off if they attack there. Uh, you've got to attack units that you're adjacent to, basically, or in zones of control of. So we've got lots of RD that we can apply to bring some some pressure there. So this, this is kind of a stalemate area, but... Uh, uh, this, this effort here is probably going to peter out. And really, as you can see from the force allocation across the map, I'm heavy on Damascus, and I want to, uh, want to try and capture that as quickly as possible. Uh, there is an opportunity for me to start pushing some other units over, 
but I've got to I've got to guard this pass to keep the, keep the roads open and supply lines open. So there's not a lot I can pull over there. All these guys are still stuck in garrison mode, so it's very very difficult. Um, right, so that's kind of the situation with the game. Let's have a quick look at sort of the key key bits that we like to consider when we're when we're doing a, sort of a wrap up. <clears throat> So it does put you in the role of an overall army commander. I, I don't know that, um, and I've already mentioned all the scale and army units and, and all that sort of stuff. We're really dealing with companies and battalions and there's some regiments uh, scattered around here and there. Uh, there are very, the decision making uh, is more uh, tactically, tactically oriented versus strategic. Uh, the only uh, and maybe operational, right? So there's an operational choice. Are we going to attack along the coast, head for Damascus, go up the valley? What you know? What what are we going to do? That's really the the the, the extent of your sort of telescoped out uh, command choices. And then it gets down to tactical. Uh, what what are the best odds I can get on any given attack? And where can I apply a mass of artillery to kind of blow my way through a, a hole through the line? cross that river line or that uh, defensive ridge or hill and then force a retreat by the enemy. Or can I counterattack and do the same sort of thing? Uh, you have pretty much full intelligence. You can see everything that's going on. Uh, there, there are limits to the you know, stack looking, right? Looking at the stacks and things. I'm playing it solo, so part of that is, uh, is missing for me, but that is, that is what it is. I, I think you could obviously play a few games with you know putting weak units on top and having a five defender, strength defender underneath, however realistic that may be. Objectives are pretty straightforward. The play objectives are to capture all the uh, red, red boxed hexes, uh, capture Beirut or Damascus and the game is over. Uh, so that, uh, that will have an impact and that's gonna drive, that's gonna drive the gameplay because if you can if you can very quickly push up towards Damascus and uh, you know isolate the guys in the tail end the, behind you and and force a general retreat, you can get it, get yourself in a position like I have here, where we're going to take Damascus in the next two turns, and there's not a whole lot the French can do about it. And if it's not two turns, it's three turns. I think historically it happened on turn ten, but at the beginning of turn seven. We're well within the historical bounds of, of making that uh, a reality, right? Now, why there's the rest of this map and, you know, VP locations up here and there's another one there. And I, I don't understand because if I, if I capture Damascus, the game's over. So why am I, why am I, why would I even want to drive up there and try and get that? There's no, I don't see a, a rational way that you could, have enough units here defending to hold out, have the Commonwealth surround these forces so they're not a threat, keep them isolated, right, and out of supply. They don't die if they're out of supply, but just keep them isolated and out of your way that I could then keep myself in supply. I guess I could go up this road maybe uh, and then continue down, down the road to capture other VP loca locations. So it's a little curious... Uh, you know the game could <clears throat> really be played out uh, on this sort of section. I, I, you know, I guess I need to play more of it or play it opposed to understand what the rationale behind that was. So that's your your player objectives. Order of battle, order of battle, order of battle. Granularity is is good. I, I've, I've compared the the forces with uh, you know the other title here, and we've got a, an equivalent amount of. Units and formations and companies and battalions are all basically in play here, and they're uh, they're all present and accounted for. Generally speaking, as best I can tell, uh, I've talked a little bit about the com conflict resolution, the CRT, and my, some of my my challenges with it. I think I think there was definitely an attempt here to give the game a little more length and life by adjusting the CRT and adjusting the unit structure to have this uh, concept of steps where you know this guy's a, a four three five and he takes a step loss and he flips over to a two two five uh, that is that was I think a nice effort to bring 
or fix some of the challenges that probably would have occurred with the original drive on Damascus, just looking at the rules in the CRT and and the objectives in that game, you could see that it was a very, very, very deadly CRT. Uh, it was pretty much all or nothing most of the time. You were either dead or you were treated as a, a smattering of exchanges. So <clears throat> I think I think the CRT works okay in this game. It's a step in the right direction, but it's probably not ideal, I don't think, yet. Uh, so let's just say that. Uh, supply, logistics, and all that sort of stuff, really straightforward. Count a number of hexes back to uh, a main road and back to a supply source and you're in supply. And you check that at the point of movement and the point of combat, and that's pretty much it. This is a very straightforward, very simple game, easy to understand. I literally set it up and got straight after it. I skimmed the rules and made a few quick, uh, you know, a few quick summary notes here. And was playing the only thing you need to check in on is the there's a table for naval transportation and uh, commando landings and how to use the air and stuff like that and so just a, a bunch of DRMs that you would apply to a die roll to see whether or not uh, you know that effort was successful and that's pretty much it so this is a larger you know large hex format large hex uh, counter format introductory war game with a interesting historical uh, topic that is not covered very often uh, it, it has beautiful uh, artwork and the maps are a pleasure to look at it's it's not the nuanced and detailed treatment that you might get from a, a richer more complex game but it, it, but it's giving you roughly the same result. Uh, it's the, the, the reluctant enemies comes at this from a different angle, from logistically, right? So it, it, there's some some uh, tethers on the advance and on the approach to the advance and planning for your combats and all the rest of it. Whereas here, it's pretty much all right. I'm going to go get Damascus, and so you barrel up the road. And uh, you try and plan your attacks that way and kind of go for things from there. Uh, Playtime, I think this is complete. It plays very quickly. It's five minutes per side. Uh, I plan out all the attacks, write all the odds down, grab a handful of dice, roll the dice, put the dice down across uh, each combat, and then uh, look at all the results. Boom, we're done. Uh, and then you move on and do the same thing for the other side. So it plays very quickly. I think you'll get some good replay value out of this game. It's not a one and done situation because there is enough here that as a, as a new, particularly as a new war gamer, you're gonna to wanna to experiment with, you know, can I take Damascus quickly? Oh, okay, well, can I take uh, Beirut quickly? Uh, can I? drive up the middle here and then hang a lefty or a righty and uh, capture them that way. Uh, how heavily do I need to defend my flank here from the Druze forces? Kind of <laughs> all these little cavalry guys, which are a real pesky little annoyance. Uh, you've got to have enough uh, forces screening there to protect your supply line, keeping in mind that supply is not it's not a big deal, really. Uh, I don't need this much force here. I can use this this road here back to a supply line. So I could have dropped all the way back here and had less units if I wanted. I chose to keep a decent force and try and capture this uh, supply zone here to put some pressure on these guys. Uh, that is what it is. So there are, there are enough options here and tactical things to explore to get two to four to five plays out of this and i think if you got that much out of it you'd get your gain your value keep in mind there's an entire another scenario in here and, and another map and another set of counters that will be used to play this out and uh, fight the battle out for sorry for for a new battle that's called uh, the battle for karen and we won't get into looking at that. Uh, we'll we'll set that up a little bit later on and have a look at it. But this was right, uh, ideally just to have a conversation about the system and about the um, and about the drive on Damascus. So <clears throat> all, all in all, I think it's a, a fun and interesting title. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of good redeeming features here. It's a little uh, it need it needed uh, or needs to 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 my mind it. 
everything dies a little too quickly. And that seems to be uh, accelerating, potentially accelerating the, uh, the losses here. And there's, there's no replacement points coming back in uh, or no replacements. There's only reinforcements of which there are very few for both sides in the early part of the game. So that, well, you know, something once it's, it's, it's shot, it's gone. That's, not really what happened here and typically not what really happens with any formation, right? There's usually something left, but that's very typical for many, many war games and very typical for uh, a game of this level of complexity that, you know, once you kill it, it's off the map and it doesn't come back. Uh, so no real gripe there. It's just an observation. All right. Thought I'd share that with you, leave it with you and I hope uh, that uh, if you get it, you enjoy it. And uh, it's a Compass Games title. And I hope you uh, look forward to and I look forward to uh, sharing some more with you when we set up uh, Bloody Karen. Ciao.